Good morning, good afternoon or good evening everybody and thank you very much for joining today's webinar. This webinar is on SLOPE and DFTC, DFTP and DFTF and we'll explain what those are in a few minutes. It's based around the Talleyrand instruments from Taylor Hobson and also the form Talisov instruments from Taylor Hobson. And analysis is typically done in associated software called Metrology 4.0 software. So again, thank you for joining and let's press ahead now with the uh, webinar. In this webinar, we're going to take a look at a few types of analysis on Taylor Hobson's Talleyrand and Form Taliserv systems. In particular, slope analysis and departure from true circle or departure from true plane. And that's what DFTC and DFTP mean. We'll also have a look at departure from true form or DFTF. We'll make us. We'll make a start with slope analysis. And looking now at slope analysis, if we look at the diagram on the left, we can see a profile, a roundness profile from a typical bearing assembly, for example. And on it, we can see one very uh, prominent feature there and the simulation of a ball in a ball uh, in a bearing race encountering that obstacle and in this case the peak to valley of the roundness is is in accordance with its specification it's in specification for a manufacturer of bearings for example certain harmonics are undesirable not only is the roundness critical in these cases, but also the slope of the surface at certain harmonics. As the size or the amplitude of the harmonics increase, this increases the slope of the surface. And as the frequency of the harmonics increase, this also increases the slope of the surface. So slope analysis is directly linked to harmonic analysis. Back to the diagram there on the left, the roundness tolerance may have been passed as we mentioned, but because all of the error is in one position, problems will occur during the parts function. So considering a bearing with a number of balls, not just one, passing around an inner race, the deviation shown may cause deterioration and wear and affect the function of the bearing assembly. And we can see what happens here. On the left, we can see a slope upwards and downwards, and we see deceleration as the balls move up the slope and acceleration as the balls move down the slope and this would be on a typical bearing race we've shown it in a straight line there but if we consider a bearing race it, it's the same thing that happens as the the balls will move towards and away from the center of the bearing and so on the right what's happening here where we've got many more undulations, the many ball bearings in the bearings ra bearing race will change in velocity and the balls will collide. As they collide, they will cause excessive wear to the bearing. So we clearly need to quantify the value of slope. If we had a perfectly circular profile, then there would be no collisions. So how do we look at the value of slope? 
On the left here is shown the method that we use to calculate the maximum and average slope values of an analysed profile. And what we can see here is uh, the blue dot with the red line, red circle around it indicates the current point. And typically in a profile like this, we might have uh, 3,600 data points, 18,000 data points, or even 72,000 data points. And we're considering each data point around the profile, but we're also considering three points either side of that of that point that we're considering. So the calculations are made within an operator selected window specified in degrees. And the slope for each data point within a window is calculated by using that data point and the three data points either side. So a line is drawn through those to indicate the slope that applies to that data point. We then move on to the next data point and three points either side of that are also taken and the average slope is calculated. So the average value for all of these, these data points is calculated and stored. The maximum slope is the maximum of these stored averages. And it will occur at a particular position on the profile. The average slope is the average of the stored average slopes. The units are microns, that's radially, per degree, and that's as we go around the part. So we're dealing in microns per degree for slope values. So slope is the rate of change of radius with respect to angle. In a bearing race, for example, the angle of a window chosen for calculation is usually related to the number of ball bearings in that race. Knowing the number of ball bearings and the size of the race, it's possible to calculate the relevant harmonic and hence the critical slope angle. The contact area of the ball will enable the designer to specify the angle at which too large a slope is critical. And so the parameters we deal with in slope analysis are maximum slope, where we've specified a slope and where we've specified a slope window, uh, that maximum slope will occur at a particular position. So in the example shown here, we can see that the maximum slope is 0.929 microns per degree, and it occurs, uh, it's been analyzed using this slope window here of 10 degrees, and the position of that maximum slope is at 54.3 degrees. This is the zero degree position, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 54.3 degrees starts here. And the average slope of all the data points all the way around the profile is 0.419 microns per degree. When we're not considering circular bearings, we're considering bearing surfaces which may be flat, the same thing applies. And ball bearings will decelerate upslopes and accelerate downslopes. But in this case, instead of dealing with angle, we're dealing with a height. And so the slope values are calculated based on the rate of change of height with respect to length. And again, there are an associated set of um, parameters. So um, we have the mean least square slope and there is an associated uh, window with that. And we have the maximum slope and there is an associated window. And this occurs at a particular position, just as it did with the circular slope. So this is linear. The previous one was circular. Let's have a look now at departure from true circle and departure from true plane 
on a roundness instrument, in this case, Taylor Hobson's Talleyrand systems. So DFTC, as we've mentioned, means departure from a true circle. Over the full 360 degrees, it's the same thing as roundness. So this is, if you like, local roundness. But why would that matter? Well, we might have a situation where we've got a fuel pipe, such as in the picture here, where if there is a, an error that occurs particularly at one point, then that's where the leakage may occur. So we might have a specification over the whole of the, uh, the circle, over the whole of the round part, which passes, but we might also have a separate specification relevant to a particular area where we're looking at leakage. So DFTC can be used to specify departures from a true circle at an angular position on a roundness profile. So for example, the cylinder bore needs to be round to set a tolerance. However, it wouldn't function well, as in the case here, if all the roundness error was in one spot. So the local error may cause compression, fuel and oil problems, for example, due to a poor seal. So how do we capture these errors? What happens is the operator can specify an angular window, and we'll have a look at that in a minute, and use this angular window to check if the departure within that window is within a specified tolerance all around the part. So in the example here, we're looking at departure from true circle. And the roundness value is 2.29 microns. That's all around the part from the highest peak, which is probably here to the lowest valley, which looks as if it's about there. But the departure from true circle is analysed over this, in this case, a window of 30 degrees. And here is that window. And that window has been moved around data point by data point until it finds uh, the position where it, ha it has the uh, maximum value. And so associated with that 30 degree window is an angle of 249.1 degrees. Again, 0, 90, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, 230, 240, 249.1, and that's where that window starts. And so in this particular case, we might find, or we would possibly find that the, uh, the leakage would occur at this point. As well as having departure from true circle, we have departure from true plane. And this is done for flatness measurements rather than in the vertical direction, rather than uh, for uh, roundness measurements. But the parameters are very similar. Let's have a look now at departure from true form. Previously, we looked at an area where leakage may occur circumferentially. If we consider a shaft and a seal, we may find that leakage will occur along the length of the shaft as well. So we're interested in form variations along the shaft. And so we would measure this, for example, on a form Talisov instrument or actually on the Talleyrand, uh, but we would measure it in a linear direction rather than circumferen circumferentially. So DFTF, departure from true form, can be used to specify departures from the profile over a specified window in just the same way that we saw on the roundness profile. So for example, a bearing surface may need to have a low form error to set a tolerance. And again, however, it would not function well if all of that error occurred in one spot. The DFTF window is the operator selected segment within which the departures from true form are calculated. So instead of moving uh, similar to on the roundness profile, we move one data point 
uh, by a data point along the profile until we find um, the maximum position. And in this case, the uh, the FTF window is half uh, half a millimeter. That's that distance. And the form value found is 0.2 microns. That's from there to there. And the position is at 168.165. And that's where that window starts there. So in summary, we've looked at slope analysis. We've had a look at departure from true circle and departure from true plane. And we've had a brief look at departure from true, true form. And that brings me to the end of this very short webinar. Please do take a look at our bearings application brochure and at other information on our website at www.taylor-hobson.com. This is part of a series of bearing, <coughs> pardon me, of bearing solutions webinars. Um, again, on the website, you can go and have a look at any of these and many more. Thank you for listening. Don't think there are any questions today, so I'm going to close the webinar and uh, say goodbye. <laughs>